So here we are. We are back again. We're back real early too. We 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 hit you with the first episode um a week ago, the 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 pilot, the intro, and we're back here with the official first episode. It's Rico. I'm here. It's the Zaza Pod. You know, it doesn't get any better than this. And uh, I have a lovely, lovely pair of ladies with me. Would you mind introducing yourselves? My name is Monique McCauley. They call me Mo. Nice to meet you. Nice to nice meet, to meet you. you. And I am Marvina Brown. Most people call me Vina or Miss V with Belgian Spa here in Atlanta, Georgia. Fantastic. So that's where you guys are. You guys are both in Atlanta. Um, would you mind letting me know where you guys are exactly? Because I feel like it looks real familiar, but I just can't place my, I just can't, you know, it's like something to my tongue. I just, I just can't get it. I can't get it. We are at the famous, absolutely amazing Zaza Hookah and Smoke Shop right here in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Oh, smoke it up. Oh, yes. Please smoke it up right there in Stone yes. Mountain, Georgia for all your hookah and vape needs, you know, um, Hookahs to go, hookahs, hookahs there. Anything you might need, you can get it there for sure. Stone yeah. Mountain, Georgia. The address will be on the on screen. Don't worry about it. But all right. How you ladies doing today? So far, so good. How are you? I'm fantastic. It's a great day to be alive. Another yes. day on top of the dirt, right? Yes. That's that's what I'm hoping for. Um I'm I'm also excited. I'm very, very excited to to, you know, pick the brains of People in the entrepreneurial space, especially strong black women, you know, those we very much so appreciated you guys being a part, an integral pillar of our culture. You know, we couldn't we wouldn't be here without you guys. So that, that's just a round of applause for that. Um, so I'd like to start out by asking, I'd like to ask anybody that I'm interviewing, would you eat for breakfast? How'd you start your day? Ooh, sunflower seeds. Okay, okay. Okay, not the greatest start. Not the greatest start. Sunflower right. seeds and water. You gotta add sunflower water seeds and in. water. Okay, as long as you've been hydrated. Yes, I'm hydrated. What about you, Ms. V? What'd you have for breakfast today? So, of course, I had that amazing water that's here at Zaza Hookah. You yeah, know, so I had that, and I started the off. water. Plug it, oh, please. Let man. the people know. I need to get you a bottle and show it to you. Please. That is called. It is an amazing water, and it just hydrates the body on a cellular level. You know how sometimes mm. you get that bottled water and you just drink it down because you're real thirsty, and you then you feel, feel like anything. you're slushy in the stomach, like it yeah. didn't digest properly. Well, this water doesn't do that to you. There we oh go. My goodness. Let me get a little closer. Oh my goodness. It literally, goodness. as you begin to yeah. drink it, it's called body aid for a reason. It aids the okay. body in healing as you are sipping. Love it. I love that. Yes. Hey, and you know where you can get it? You can get it at Zaza. Zaza. That's it. <laughs> you can, that's where you can get it. I said we they have everything you need. You can heal the body and treat the body as much as you like. So that begs a question. With all these businesses, with all these lovely flourishing businesses and all these entrepreneurs, I'd have to ask, what does that mean to you? What does business mean to me? Am I asking, am I answering that question correctly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Business just means empowerment. Business means that um, you're able to sustain yourself with what you do and what your passion is. Um, your passion has to be something that you'll be able to do 24 seven or maybe 48, eight, even though there's not eight days, sometimes it feels like eight days. So yeah, 48, eight, um, and that you won't be able to stop. This is something that you love to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you'll make your money at. That's when you make your business at. It's something that you love. What's your passion? What do you like? What do you don't like? How can you do it in the right way where people will be um, receptive to you? Okay, fantastic. Is um is that one of the things that the 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 reception part of things and the and the constant grind? What do you feel as if what's the thing that can make or break an entrepreneur or businessman or woman? To be consistent. Okay. You have to be consistent in what you do. Um I was asked a question recently if I uh if I take you somewhere, will you be able to sustain whatever order that you get? 
And the answer is yes, if there is consistency. Mm -hmm. um, consistency also means that you have to be able to uh, be able to do what you do consistently without stop. Um, so it's on a two part level, the consistency of quantity and quality and the consistency of focus. OK, do you feel as if in today's climate, though, with with there being so many different distractions and so many different things that can take you away from business? Do you feel as if that consistency is a lot harder to come by nowadays or do you feel as if the current climate has made it easier to come by? No. I don't think when you own your own business, it makes anything easy mm -hmm. for you. Um, what I think is that you just have to keep on your grind. You have to be on point. Um, if you're not, then life gets you. It doesn't make a difference what it is. If it's a death in the family, that'll stop you for like a second. So you have to realize life will get you and you have to, after, after you get over whatever that hump is, you're gonna have to go back on to being your, to doing your grind. And sometimes when you have a life interruption, you don't want to do that anymore. Your focus changes on something. Mm -hmm. And I feel like focus is is a key part of consistency. You know, being able to consistently stay focused on on your craft or your business is um it's it it comes it comes to a certain point where where your focus is the only thing that's keeping you consistent. When you have nothing else to really push you, when you when everything else is behind you, I feel like the focus is the thing that will drag most people forward. Um, which leads me to ask, what are what are if you could give three keys, right, to 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 the to the kingdom, to the business kingdom, the entrepreneurial kingdom, that comes from your own experience, like some of the hardships, like what were some of the keys that you had that helped you open up those doors so let me tell you a little bit about what my business is mm -hmm. let's start with there please my, my name is monique mccauley they call me mo my business is mo mac creations mo mac creations is just an umbrella for other little businesses underneath my main business is wedding accessories so i bling out wedding bouquets i also bling out sneakers um, I do centerpieces and I will decorate your event for you, whatever the event is, but I basically love weddings. I just love love. So I do that. Um, so when with the wedding brooms, with the bouquets, with the sneakers, anything for the bride, anything for the groom, that's what I do. So mm -hmm. I bling it out. I make sure that it is beautiful um, and I make sure that it's what you want and what you mm -hmm. desire. So with that being said, when I started about too many years ago, let's say it like that. Too many years ago, um, I just started doing it as um, my girlfriend was getting married and mm -hmm. she was like, make me a wedding broom. I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna make a broom. And I started making a broom. So what I did was I made the broom by hand. So I actually got the straw, tied the straw together. And then I actually ordained the broom. Um, uh, yeah, ordained, um, adorned. Ah, that's the word, adorn, adorn the broom in order for it to be pretty. And that was her wedding broom. Um, so I started out doing that. And then people just kept asking me to say so everything for me was word of mouth. I didn't have a business card. I didn't have a website. I didn't have anything. I just was doing everything word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Then it came to a point somebody was like, Monique, you cook well. Have you ever cooked for a wedding? So I was like, eh, I never cooked for a wedding, but I can cook. So let's see if this will happen. So then I started cooking for two people. Then I started cooking for 200 people. Oh From God. there, I started making baskets. Then they were like, why are you making gift baskets? You know, you can make money. Everybody, oh, you can make money off of this. Mm -hmm. So I started making gift baskets and then I died out. The reason why I died out is because life interrupted me mm -hmm. and my focus was lost. And then I got my focus back. And I came from the Bronx. So big up to the Bronx. Um, I came from the Bronx. And so when I moved to Georgia, I said, let me do this all over again. So I started doing weddings all over again. Um, I started, the first party I think I did was a baby shower. Okay. From there, my focus increased because people kept pushing me. My mom kept pushing me. People, other people kept pushing me. So you do need a force that's behind you in order to push you um, when you're on your lowest point. Mm -hmm. So when I was down, I had people to push me. My focus was to be um, what I wanted to be instead of what I needed to be. I wanted to be a wedding um, coordinator. That's what I wanted. I manifested that in my life, that that's what I wanted. Um, I also had people, um, I got with people who were in the industry and they were helping me out as well. So you also need a mentor as well. 
Okay. So your focus is good. That's number one. That's one of my key points to have a focus that you are going to be what you want to be manifest what you want to be. The second one is to get a mentor in that space. It may be the hardest thing for you to do, but you need to find somebody who's in that space that may be able to get you through the door where you want to be at. Mm -hmm. The third point is let your circle be the greatest circle ever because you need your sisters, your mother, again, that support system to be there for you. Mm -hmm. When you fall and somebody don't pay you your money and you want to go after them, you have to have your sister behind you be like, nah, let's let, let the father handle that. Yeah. You know, don't don't do nothing because that'll end you in some place where you're gonna have to spend more money than what was what was um, mm -hmm. not given to you. So those are, and and also make sure that you know who you are. That's the most important part. Make sure you know who you are. Make sure you know that you're the best in whatever you do. Even though you may be on your lowest, nobody may even know your name. But make sure you're the best at what you do. Keep um, perfecting your craft. Keep going to different shows. They may cost money, but keep going to the shows. People will see your see what you do, mm -hmm. and then they'll be like, you know what? I got this card in my bag. I got this bling on my phone. This lady does wedding accessories. I've seen her Facebook. I've seen this. I've seen that, and I'm going to call her up, yeah. and that's how you get started. So those are the three things. Your focus, your mentor, and just have a great support system, and then have people like you and also like Marvina to just network with you and go to different places where you can introduce yourself to your craft. Man, that that was that was perfect. That was incredible. It would that 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 definitely answered my question. Um, <laughs> now with you with you being in the wedding industry, I'd like to ask, right? Because uh my generation, right, we're currently all moving up to that point, right? Has it has there been a difference in clientele? Is it from from when you may have first started till now? How does it how have things changed for you? How is your business? Um, how has it evolved? Is the, is the question I'm trying to ask. So. Back in the day, <laughs> it was and, and I'm going to say it like this. It was usually gender gender. Mm -hmm. That's how it has changed for me. So I went from doing um, female and male to doing male and male female and female. And I was like, okay, everybody wants different things. Um, everybody wants a, a different level of, of, of growing. Some people want real simple. I've had somebody want teddy bears and balloons and they were like 40 some odd years old to somebody. Yeah. Teddy bear. Don't, I, I can't, no, I can't do it. But <laughs> right. If that's what you want, guess hey, what? That's I'm going to get it for you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, and then I want, there are other people who want flowers. Mm hmm you know, and then there was one person who wanted Star Wars. So there's different, yeah, yeah. That's that's what they theme was. I couldn't, I couldn't do that because, and I also deal with budgets. So mm -hmm. if your budget is low, do not expect for me to give you a twenty thousand dollar wedding on a fifteen hundred dollar budget. Yes, that's not going to happen. And that's another thing, people don't realize what we do costs mm -hmm. money, and we also have to pay ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, people yeah, forget yeah. that they forget all about that they forget oh you got to pay yourself oh i thought you just have to buy the supply right no well how am i gonna get to you what where what vehicle what what right. that i'm not doing the flintstone thing you know tell me yeah. what i'm doing so you know that ha that's a big part of it that people really don't they want something but they don't mm -hmm. want to pay pay the money for it and i'm a, i'm gonna I'm a introduce you to something so sunday um uh, my pastor said he's going to curse on the pulpit, you know, another pastor curse on the pulpit. The curse word he used was work. He said, you have to do the work. He said, people don't understand. You want to get someplace, but you don't want to do the work. That's a curse word to some people because they, they say, once you start, you got to work for it. Oh, I don't want to work for it. Uh, you know, I guess I changed my mind. I guess I'll go someplace else, but anything you do, you have to work for it. Definitely. So with that kept in mind, we have to work, for what we need and what we want. Mm -hmm. When you work for it, it makes it so much better. That's like giving a kid $50 because they did the work. They'll appreciate that $50 more because they work for it Definitely. other than you just giving it to them. They're just going to do frivolous stuff with it because mm -hmm. they feel if I continue to work, I'm going to get this money. Thanks. So you got to put in the work and that's what we do. We put in the work 
so that you don't have to do it. The coordinators put in the work so that you don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. So can you just pay me for what I do Please pay and be and pay me what I'm worth? That's the part. What That's I'm the worth. thing. So I'm sure you've had a nightmare story. Oh, I got great nightmare stories. What you want? To want? Please just hit <laughs> hit the viewers with one, please, because I know so, I know you have something. The nightmare story is um, I'm gonna I'm tell you about my second wedding that I've ever done. Okay. So the second wedding that I did, it was on a two part. My truck broke down. Oh man. Um, and then when the truck broke down, the person who helped me move the stuff out the truck broke my plates, so I had cracked plates. So I was late for the reception. So, and this is when I was cooking for the reception. I was late for the reception. Then the person who was supposed to um, help me, her daughter got into a fight. So oh. it was just me and another person. So since her daughter got into a fight, of course she had to handle her family manners. Mm -hmm. When I got there, the bride was like, um, you know what, I really changed my mind. I really don't want fish anymore and I forgot to tell you. I was like, but I cook, you, we, huh? <laughs> It, it was just like a weird, the weirdest thing. And she was like, yeah, so I got somebody else to cook what I wanted. So I was like, well, you should have told me then I wouldn't have had to. She said, but yeah, I'll give you the money that you need, but I just want your vegetables and I'll take the chicken from the other lady. I was like, uh, okay. And now, then they were like, oh, you, you're you late and you didn't cut the cake and you didn't do this. I said, but you got somebody else to cook. I, I should not be involved in this anymore. I may, I, you know, just pay me my money and I can leave. And I'll take my 300 pieces of card with me, <laughs> cooked. Mm. So that's one of my, that's my greatest horror story ever. So, I, and that's why, so what I do is this. So what I do is I do a consultation with you. I sit down with you. I ask you what you want. I ask you how you want it. Then I ask you, do you want me to cook? If you want me to just do decorations, I do decorations. If you want me to cook, I do decorations. That's what I do. So I'll set up a plate for you. I'll set up plates. I'll get people to come in. So you'll have the plates. You'll have the glasses. You'll have everything right there. You taste my food, everything, so that you'll know. And we write it out. We do a little contract. You give me my deposit, and then I leave. And then I, you know, we check up on each other. How you doing? Everything going well? My fish is going well. Your, your bridal is going well. Everything is fine. Mm -hmm. So at the end, you sign the contract. We leave. That's it. I get to the place. Today is the day. Congratulations. Love you. Can't wait to see you. Be there in a few. With all the stuff that's happened, now you saying to me at the very end, you forgot to call me. Well, you should have called me the day after we sat down and ate. Definitely. To tell me that you wanted to change the menu, but then you have another person to cook the chicken. But the lady just didn't cook chicken; she cooked like a whole, menu. Aunt, a whole menu. So I'm like, okay. So now, what do you want me to do? I said, have the lady to cut the cake for you. She was you like, had her do everything else. Yes. So I left. I left and left her fish right there. She had. To, <laughs> she so had that was my cake. next question. <laughs> I, I left the say, fish what right there. The fish. I left it. Oh. What's the need for me to take it? Who am I take it home to? I know. And then I was like, I could give it to the homeless. No, this is bad fish. I'm not. And even though it was it was good, it was to me a bad fish. Not that the fish was bad, but the situation. The whole was situation. Bad. Just yeah. it was it was just tainted. It was bad it energy was fish. fish. It yeah. wasn't. It wasn't so we wasn't fish. gonna give that to nobody. I understand. Oh so, yeah, understand. that was my that's my number one horror story. Man, I'm not I was gonna say fantastic, but that's not fantastic. <laughs> um, great story, great bad, story ending. bad ending. Yes, great story, yeah. bad ending. But I got but, paid, so that's yeah, all that matters. Right, you got paid, and it also speaks to your tenacity and versatility. Um, being able to you know transform in any situation like that, yeah. even when it's not you know going your way, being able to still come out at, with a uh, with your money, yes. right? Is First always is first. always a good thing. Yes. It's always yeah. a good thing. Um, is is there anything you like to leave with the viewers before you get out of here? Anything? Any any last like of one of these jewelry store of gems that you've dropped so far? <laughs> just there, make sure that you love what you do. Just love you, what you 
do. Just love what you do. That's basically it. If you love it, then everybody else will love it too. But you have to have that niche. What's your niche? Mm-hmm. And that's the whole thing. Because sometimes your passion is not your niche. I get that. That see, it's like I said, a jewelry store. She, I asked for one, she gave me three. It's, <laughs> it's, it's always wonderful. I really appreciate you coming and talking to Thank us. Thank you. It was a Thank pleasure you. having you, and you, you'll probably be back again. Yeah, and just you know, it's just a little, you know, a little plug. You know, it's Mo Mac M O M C Creations with a C. Um, it is six seven eight eight two four two four eight four. You can reach me at any time. Right now, I'm working on my website, but I do have Facebook and also Instagram. You can always see me on Momac Cre- underscore creations on Instagram and also on Facebook as Momac Creations. What you'll see is an onk. It's a purple onk. That's how come you know it's me. We love that. Don't see the purple onk, then it ain't me. Can we it, get the name one more time, please? It's Momac, M O M C underscore creations. And it's just for Monique McCauley. That's me. I love it. I love it. I appreciate you so much, Miss McCauley. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. And um, you know what? Please, no more, no more 300 pieces of cod. No, 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 no. No, right? <laughs> no more. No more. We confirm twice now. Oh, yeah. See, <laughs> you live and you learn. It's the evolution. Yeah, that's it. That's about, that's what business is. Yeah. If you fail on one investment, the next investment will come through. That's it. That's what it is. I get it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You. 